Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Well, good evening. It's Monday night. It's 9 o'clock. It is 10 Your Tip with me, Gary Dibley, and the ever-capable co-presenter that we have in Mark. Um, Maybe looking a little bit red in the shed tonight. Uh, Got the heat in cranked up. Um, It is damn cold out there tonight. Don't know if any of you guys have been... uh, Well, lucky enough, we haven't had the snow down here. No snow at all. Um, Apparently, it's going to be coming tonight. Um, My daughter has been absolutely uh, sort of waiting for it by the window this morning. Not a bean. So uh, there we go. What have we got lined up for you this week? Um, as promised, Mark will be commencing his uh, his DNA uh, mod. Um, he's got the board, lucky boy. Um, he didn't have it when he commenced, you know, when he started the filming. Um, he does have it now. Um, yeah, I'm so jealous. But yes, we're going to be looking at how Mark is uh, is sort of starting off the uh, the mission, if you like, the pre-build of his box. I'm going to be finishing off my uh, VV uh, Gripper mod um, that we're transporting to a new body. Um, and lots and lots and lots of other bits lined up for you tonight. Um, yeah. Terrible week for me personally. My car blew up right after the show last week on the Tuesday. Clutch fell out of it. Um, It's now in a scrapyard. So um, we've had to frantically rush and try and find another car for Mrs. to get to work in. Um, Which we found hopefully is going to be better than the last one because it was absolutely riddled with problems. I know we've had mods like that. As going on a little bit, what we were saying uh, last week, Potentially, we will be um, next week um, lining up if if we can get. Uh, I say potentially, if we can get um, Mark in the studio, we'll probably finish off his uh, his DNA mods as he, as he goes through those set of videos, and we'll try and do a, a bit of uh, the live chat that we were talking about. Um, so, if you guys have got anything that you'd like to uh, to add. To, uh, to next week's show, um, drop me or Mark a line on the Vapor Trails forum and uh, and we'll see if we can get them included in the show. Um, going on from there, week after that, 28th of January, um, it will be Tin Your Tips first birthday. It'll be exactly a year um, on the 28th to the day uh, that Tin Your Tip first started to broadcast. Um, or the show went out for the first time um, so yeah we might be doing something fun for that and we'll uh, we'll try and get some prizes for you guys and uh, have a little few comps and things like that on the go better start cracking on the videos uh, I'm gonna be picking up where I loft, left off loft off yeah left off last week um, with the VV gripper it was in the grippers uh, and here we go oh by the way I've decided I hate the messy resin epoxy You'll see why. So here we are again on our uh, little, uh, that was a VV gripper, um, catching up from last week, uh, left exactly where we are. Um, I was going to be using hot glue um, to hold the battery connection in. Um, I've decided not because I've, I've just been on a little shopping expedition and um, I know some of the questions in chat last week were, you know, what what sort of epoxies and things like that do we use? Um, well, I've just got this little kit, as it were, from the pound shop. As you can see, your two-part epoxy mixer, you've got your little clampy thing in there, and a little spatula thing for mixing it all up. So I'm going to be using that to hold it in. I hate this stuff, but uh, there we go. Apparently, it is a rapid set in four to six minutes. We'll see if that is actually true. I'm not going to sit and watch it dry for four to six minutes, but I will be doing it and putting it on one side. Where did we get to? Um, he says very noisily slamming things around on the bench. Well, I've decided I'm going to leave the... Uh, the. Let me just get down so you can have a look at this. I've decided I'm going to leave my power leads in. Uh, these are going to go straight to the battery. I'm going to use the existing switch wire. The one thing I have done is taken off the... Uh, the two atomizers, they just weren't going to be long enough to go where I needed to get them. So I'm going to start off by, as you can probably see on that board, you do have a ground and an out. Now the out is your pause, ground is, is obviously your neg. Um, I'm just going to trim up a couple of, uh, of wires and I shall be tinning these up. A neg and a pause. Let me just take this back out while we do that. Whee! 
a little bit too far. Uh, but effectively, I'm just going to be tinning up um, a neg wire and tinning up a uh, pos wire. And what I'm going to do is once I've tinned these up, I'm just going to strip them right back. I'll show you why. back on that board. A little bit too far. Focus. It's going to be one of those technology days today where we're suffering. There we go. Flapping around like a good one. So bringing in there, I've got my, my wire obviously, and I'm just going to take that back to a little nogging. I've only got a little tiny bit of wire on there. Same again with my leg lead. I've pre tinned that up. I'm just going to take back. It says just a little bit sticking out like that. We'll turn this board round, hopefully keeping it in where we're going. It's just purely so I can work on this. You can see there you've got a ground in and out. Now, on the ground, I'm literally just going to tin up my tip again. On top of the uh, on top of the ground, I'm going to come off the top of this board. Attach that to the top of there. Same with my my pos wire. And this is, if you like, the out, which is the pos on the top of there, heat it up, let that settle. So it's very easy to get that attached to the uh, to the top of the board. So that will give us effectively our two wires that are coming out to our IT off our little board. Um, very easy to uh, sort of put back in place, not a problem at all. Next thing we are going to do is I'm going to uh, connect this now to the uh, to the battery terminals. Um, the reason for that, I'm doing it this way. I want to get the uh, the mod in in one piece, shall we say? I want this set. prior to, uh, to gluing it in place. It's only because when this is in it's not going to be much room to play with. So there's my pos on and same again around for the neg. So we're using the wires that are actually on the board, we've not added any more. You see how easy it was if you wanted to. But effectively, what I've got there now is my battery holder with my mod board on. Of course, as I said, uh, I believe last week, the one thing I do want to do is obviously check that uh, our board is still functioning. And I believe it certainly is. So as you can see, we can still use our uh, our sort of power function to turn off when we've got it in the tin. I'm going to go away. I'm going to mix up some of this epoxy, um, and what I'm going to effectively be doing now is setting that into the tin, roughly where I want that to go, like so. And uh, I'll be installing my switch prior to doing this. But I'll get some epoxy mixed up, I'll come back and we can have a look exactly how we're going to do this. Back in two. Right then, as Gary mentioned in last week's show, I'm going to be looking at the new DNA 20D when it arrives. At this point in time it hasn't actually arrived yet. What I'm going to do is some preliminary modification to this box so it's ready 
when the new board arrives to slot in. Uh, hopefully you'll get to see it before the end of this show. If not, it'll be next week. And basically, I'll be using one of my standard 2018 650 boxes. Get rid of the rubber bone. So what I need to do is fill in the holes in the top with epoxy putty. In this case, that's on the outside, I'll be using the fine miller put black. That'll seal up the top. I want to cut off these ridges here for the, the thumb point because I'll be covering the box, so I don't want them sticking up. So that's just a matter of taking a blade and carefully running across the top and just trimming them down flat. Is out of the way, obviously. And just cut them off till they're pretty much completely gone, like that. And then you can just give a quick sanding over the top just to finish it off nice and smooth. And the next job. Where's the epoxy pudding? Uh, this one comes in two bits. So obviously you want to cut off an amount half the size that you want. Because there's two bits, so you, whatever you cut off here, you're going to end up with twice as much in the end. So make sure you seal it up again tight. You want to keep the air away from it if you're making it for any length of time. Now this one's starting to get a bit old. You see it's starting to discolor, but it'll be alright, I'm sure. So, a roughly even size. Well, it's just a matter of mixing it a lot until so you get a single colour. And that mix nice and even. And all I want to do is put a layer on top of here. What I basically want is this to roughly the shape of the top and to make sure that it's sitting above the level of the outside of this so when I file it down, or sand it down rather, I can get a perfectly flat top to work with. So just push it down into the sides. I'm not worried about too much about how neat it is on the top. So I will be filing, yeah, filing. I will be sanding this down when I'm finished. I'm a bit on the inside of the hole area to make sure it grips properly top and bottom. The last thing you want is this coming away from the unit after all the hard work. So it's about there. Very thin layer in here. Just, just to get rid of that indentation so I've got a smooth area to work with because I will be adding the display somewhere across here I think. So I don't want a hole underneath it. I think I'll just look a bit neater like that. And again this tiny little triangle here. You see a little bit of left over. I get it to go in. Just clear away any excess. 
and as always I've got a bit left over anyway. trying to fill in any gaps. It's always better to have too much on here than too little. Because I can always remove excess later. That's basically it. Just using a wet finger you can just Help the smooth off edges before it sets. Use a wet finger, it means it won't stick to it. So. Just help smooth it all down, make sure it's all on the spaces. And that's basically it ready. I'm just gonna have to wait for it. 12 hours or so for this to set properly. Make sure it's fully set all the way through and then I'll come back to it and show you what I do next. Okay, so I've installed my switch, um, basically screwed it in. Um, what I've done on this switch is, is whereas these two uh, prongs on the switch, um, I can get down and, and see, show you those. I've actually taken those down, I've cut them down height wise um, purely because on, on the way that I'm working on this I don't want those uh, prongs to be up and potentially shorting on the lid of the tin. Uh, I've literally used the existing wires as we have them at the moment for the switch. I've wired it all up with a battery. purpose for that, I want to test this before I set it in situ. And this little light that's going on and off here is what would be uh, illuminating your power switch when you uh, you look at it in its original format. Now, beauty of that, you could obviously, if you're using this in a box scenario, um, you can rig that little LED, or you can have that LED sort of lighting up where you want. But at the moment, it's just going to be lighting in the box. But it's a good indication that a switch is currently working. I'm just going to desolder those two little terminals now. just to take that board out of the equation. Of course, the other way that we can uh, we can test our uh, our switch is going to be with a fluke. Now, I always try and, and test a switch before we uh, build it into the circuit, before we get everything in, on your beep settings. Across the two prongs, what I'm doing here is applying a little bit of pressure to the tin, pushing down. And I know that switch is working. There should be enough beeps, I reckon. So effectively what we're into now is uh, is to start constructing. Um, as you would have seen, I've left a, uh, a massive length of lead on, on, on these. It's just purely what I had cut off. I'm going to get me epoxy mixed up, get this epoxy in. Um, the one thing I will show you about this epoxy when I, while I open this, let me, uh, let me just grab it. Because it can be an absolute pain in the bum, as I found. Um, this stuff comes, obviously, blister packed. So we have our epoxy there, a little doodad dingly thing, and one of those. Um, I'm going to be using the lid because that is what I'm going to mix the resin up on. Now this stuff here, what it does say to do is to snip these back like so. Because effectively what we're doing, and it's good to get your holes roughly about the same size, so you get an even mix. I've got that all over me job is it's just to stand that upright just to let the um, the air come out as it were now the first one of these I bought I didn't read the instructions typical man thing um, there is a little uh, bit in the middle here 
that you have to remove. If you don't remove this, you can't use the epoxy. So there's a little sort of uh, a little sticky thing in the middle of this that needs to come out, which is an absolute pain in the bum sometimes to get it out. But effectively, you have to remove that centre section. Otherwise, you can't push it down. Um, let me go away, mix this up. You don't want to sit watching me mixing up epoxy, um, and I'll come back to you once it's mixed. So there we go, back in the room again. Uh, yeah, following on, and you may have noticed I've, I've grown a little bit. Um, by instruction from Cat, she wanted me to be bigger for some reason. Um, I was hoping that was the picture. Um, so yeah, at first, a little bit's there. Mark obviously uh, making me extremely jealous um, with his DNA. He's been taunting me with it all week. Um, yes, git. Uh, hopefully soon I'll get one to play with. Um, Got to save some pennies first. Uh, but yes, going to go into our first little ad break and I will see you back very shortly after this. Weber and I Weber Alexa best in Yorkshire for your ACP. That's iweber.co.uk and iweber-alexa.co.uk. I Weber and I Weber-alexa.co.uk proud sponsors of webertrails.tv. And we are back in the room once again. Yes, if you could read the chat that is going on in Skype at this moment in time, you would not believe it. One day I'm going to have to post it, I think, in the TV behind me. I wouldn't do that to your cat, honestly. Um, but yeah, the guys wanted to know which bit is bigger. Um, it is me. I've, I've tried to grow a little bit in the chair. But you are all naughty people. Um, and I'm now mentally scarred and need mind bleach. Um, Moving onwards, as I was saying, uh, next week, next week, we are going to be doing um, Mark's sort of uh, DNA thing, as I've said before. We want to get you guys involved in, in the Tin Your Tip. We want to get um, some of the questions that you want answers to. If we can't, we'll find the answers, but we're going to need those very rapidly. Um, there is a little section in the Vapor Trails forum uh, where you can post your questions for us. Um, we are here and we are willing and we are rapidly running out of ideas. Um, as you can probably imagine, a year in two weeks time, that's a damn lot of mods um, uh, that you've put together. One every week. Um, obviously I did have a little uh, a little break in the middle while I built the shed. Um, but yeah, if you can give us your thoughts, things you want to know about, um, let us know and we'll get it in the show next week for you. Uh, I am going to crack on with this we go to Mark's second part of his uh, his DNA mod, um, and once again, I shall sit back in envy. So, give it a good 36 hours or so. So now all the epoxy's well and truly dried off. I've cleaned off a few of the stray lumps. And the next job is to using my 
a very famous wet and dry paper. Let's just sand off whatever's left here so it's nice and smooth. So just put the over there. Right? That takes care of that bit. That's come up fairly clean. So again, just with the wet and dry. Now what you could do if you didn't want to wrap this in a in a wrap any sort of wrapping you want to keep just the plain finish you could go over this entire body with some wet and dry paper very fine get it done to quite a good shine on here and use a tea cut or something similar you can just polish it up to a quite a shiny plastic which does look quite nice but I'm going to wrap it because it's a lot easier and a lot less work. So, over the front. That's pretty much there. Feels pretty smooth, so I've got that whole area to work with if I want to put anything on top of it. And the next job is to take the coarsest sandpaper I've got. Put in the cover on first, of course. Make sure to push the cover all the way down, as you can see. There's now quite a layer of epoxy up above that, which I need to get rid of and get it all flat. So just on the coarsest sandpaper, just sand away. I'll be back and I've got rid of all of that. Still going. And I'm getting there. Uh, it's taken a while to sand this all down. Um, one or two of you out there may be wondering why I'm doing this by hand and not using an electric sander of some description. And the answer is simple. I did try it once and the result was that the vibrations from the sander caused the epoxy to split away and I had to start all over again. So I find it much better just to do it by hand and keep a nice easy, even surface on here and keep an eye on exactly how much I'm sanding. Getting pretty close now. Hopefully it shouldn't take much longer. And pretty much there now. I tend to do a bit of a circular motion. With my, tend to be my finger on the top so I'm not putting pressure onto the case. Yep. The sliding part of the case. Just to make sure the whole thing's nice and flat all over. I think I'm finished with that. I'll just finish it off to get a smooth surface with the fine wet and dry again. Just helps to get, a, get rid of any rough parts. And that's basically there. So that's ready to go. We'll be back in a second with the next part. So that's the basic cosmetic changes to the FC the case at least. Finished with. So. Now, I need to drill a hole for the switch before I can do anything else. So, I want to put the centre of the hole somewhere in the centre of the case. So, that's 3.9 mil, 39 mil from side to side. So, that's 19.5 mil near enough. It's got 20 to make it easier. So that's around about 
there. And the hole wants to be somewhere in the region of 16 millimeters wide, so I want this to be about 8 mil. So that gives me a point for my pilot hole at least. Handy bit of taper. So I'll get a small drill bit. epoxy mixed up and it stinks to heaven. It's um, bloody awful stuff. Uh, what I'm going to do is try and spoon um, some of my epoxy that I've got mixed here um, just down inside one edge uh, of, of this uh, this tin. Now this stuff it is awful and I, I, oh, I see it's already made a mess of it. I've seen Mark working with this um, I, I just don't like it. I mean, I'm, I'm using it in this instance because I want to get a good, a good hold on on this battery holder. So I'm just spooning it in, um, and we'll get it roughly where we want it. Because I want this to have a damn good key. And the other reason I'm going to use this liquid, or I call it liquid epoxy. Um, is because on the uh, say so typical man he's trying to do two things at once it just don't work um, what I want to do with this when I've got my my battery holder which that is gonna sort of seriously hold that in in now I'm just gonna seat it in that epoxy get it pushed down as you can see there's an amount that's coming up through that battery terminal which I don't want let's get that out because that will uh, impede the battery the other thing I'm going to do I could have hot glued this in but I'm not I'm going to seat this in also some of the uh, some of the epoxy so I'm going to get some of this um, down in here. Now I know some people say this isn't a good idea. Um, this is pretty much going to be obviously a, a permanent fix in here. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's it's a you know it's dried already. You've got to work quick with this stuff. I have to mix some more up. I can't believe it's set already. Believe it or not, that is set on the card. Or it's setting on the card, and it's very hot. What a load of rubbish! I mean, what great stuff! Um, yeah, plan B then. I think. Let me uh, pop away because that's setting. We didn't really want it to set that. Quick. We don't want it to set, just not that quickly. Um, so my battery holder is going to be in place anyway. Nice and solid. Go and mix some more. I'll tell what I'll do. I'll go and mix some more. I'll get that set in, and then we'll come back. <laughs> so a little tip: if you're working with this, it says it sets in five minutes. Um, don't mix up as much as I did because you will. Uh, before you get a chance to use it, it'll be rock bleeding solid. Um, lesson learned number one. There. At least I know that my battery is going to be setting. I'm going to go and mix some. I'll get the board in. I'll pop back into. Right, I seem to have fared rather better with the epoxy the second time round, um, but that's one of the reasons I just can't stand that stuff. Um, don't like it at all. Got my board in situ now. I've just tidied up my pos and my neguas that are going to there. Two final connections we need to make. I've trimmed back my Miati leads now. 
I'm just going to connect up the uh, the two wires that we had left over from our switch so I'm just going to get those in situ now now these are let's just say tight in this tin um, I'm probably going to use a little pair of these grips to get that down in there um, now I'm not sure what you can see what we're doing because probably getting a lot of reflection back off this tin off the lights but I'm just going to pop in there in fact, you can see absolutely nothing there, can you? I'm going in to solder the switch. We've got my first one on. And again, these are the original wires that, that were in there. For this sort of switch, it's not going to make the slightest bit of difference. But you can upgrade them if you want. So you've got the two switch wires on. Just give those a little tidy up in the tin. Now, although the epoxy at this moment in time is, uh, I've just seated the board in it effectively. Um, now, what I'm going to potentially do is use some of the putty epoxy and just fill down either side to give it a bit more stability. Although that's in there, it's rock solid, um, I think it'll just tidy it up a little bit more. Um, I've got two final connections now, which are obviously my atomizer connections. Pop those on. I'm going to feed them through the tin, through where our atty is going to be connected, feed them through the hole there, and effectively I need an old atty, which I did have somewhere, bear me one second. Old atty on. I always find that's great. The reason I, I, I also put an old atty on is it enables you to inspect the uh, the inner rubber before you start. Because effectively, if you look down in there, that rubber is absolutely even, nice and you know where it should be and all that sort of stuff. If you get a slight bulge in it or something like that, one side, you know damn well that that is um, potentially going to be a, uh, a, a you know, cause a short, which you don't want. So just tinning up the inner and outer tins. I've got my outer first with one part of the tin. And then I'll just pop down on the inner. For this one, I tend to use the pliers. Just can't get ended. I've got four things on the go at the moment. None of them are working. Let me get that one. Let's use the snips to go down inside there. Bending it back first, like so, and down in. Turn your tip down in on the pos pin, and job is done, as they say. So we have an atty on. We have everything in place. You should be able to pop the battery back in. Oh, fire up our mod. Now I think the way that this works is is you should be able to up your voltage to what you want. So it's 3.8. I think if I hit this button again, it will give me the resistance of the atomizer, which is 2.2 ohm. Now if I hit the fire button, we should have those little lights down in there. And lots of vapor. Next thing we need to do is is to seal our um, anti connection in place. So I want to get our anti connection. That's because I'm pushing on the switch, by the way, while I'm doing that. That's why I say don't like the switch. Um, we want to get that in place. Now the way that I work with this, I'm going to use a different type of epoxy putty, um, which I will show you. 
Now, this one isn't the Pound Shop stuff, this is uh, available, it's uh, from B&Q, it's a epoxy metal putty. Comes in a tube like that, it's a two part, you just uh, simply mould together and um, it's more of a plasticine type material. It's the one that I prefer working with, you, you, I find you've got a lot more, um, you know, it's a lot easier to use. Now what I would tend to do, just to, if you like, start off um, an Atty connection, I do use um, a tiny bit of uh, super glue. Now the reason I use this in the tin is, is not that this is going to actually hold it in place but what this will do is it will help seat this in place. The super glue dries very quickly and it will enable you to sort of position your Atty connector up um, and it will sort of set off. Now that will set with a view uh, to giving you a very good holding point for the for the epoxy. Um, so while I just let this dry and mix up some epoxy, I'll go away. I'll come back in two. back in the room and you do realize every week we have a show Vapex gets closer um, really looking forward to that one this year really really am and uh, hopefully tomorrow when the car arrives I should have means of transport to get there um, which is all good uh, I'm sure um, hotels are going to be filling as we speak uh, yeah definitely can't wait for that one I'm gonna pop into our second little ad break if I can find it on the screen um, and I will pop back and we'll have a chat after this. Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And we're back in a room once again. Those adverts just don't last long enough. I made it to the door for a quick five minute break and it did, didn't happen. So I'm going to sit here cross-legged for the next 15. Um, yes, 
I've been given some thought while we've been playing out these videos and obviously as I mentioned earlier the 28th is the if you like the first anniversary of tin your tip um, I'm going to be making up uh, I think I'll make up a few little kits a few little mod kits for you for you guys to win um, I will include some goodies from the pound shop there will be a poxy putty um, we'll see what we can find various torches and switches and stuff that you can have a go at making your own first mod um, so if there's anything you'd like to see in a prize from Tin Your Tip for a year's birthday in two weeks time just let me know I am going to uh, one thing must do obviously uh, is just play this one to show all of the guys who may be tuning in for the first time exactly how they can watch us on Vapor Trails TV and good evening, eventually. Took a little while to uh, get things lined up and ready to go, then. But, uh, but I'm here now, so uh, welcome to Dave's Tackle Box. So it's, uh... So there we go, I'm back in the room and not long to go now. So yeah, I was uh, my, I was talking to my son and he's, he's watched me make things before. And a very good evening to you. It is Tuesday the 20th of November 2012 and you have tuned into Vapor Seat Monthly. At Vapor Trends TV tell us, tonight being Wednesday night, it is time for the one and only chat show programme called VT Talk. Yes, it is the here's hour. Again. Again. Keith was just saying if it wasn't for the titles, he wouldn't come and do the show. He loves them so much, don't he? Oh, I like it. And there we go. It's uh, rapidly getting on, so we better get on with the uh, onward modding. Um, on to Mark's third part of his um, DNA uh, box construction. Uh, I believe he does make the announcement in this video that his DNA has in fact actually arrived. At that point, I did throw something at the screen. Catch you after this. <coughs> Start off with it on the desk, just to make my life a bit easier. And then... Go all the way through with that one. Trying to control the speed so that I don't melt the plastic terribly. Now onto the biggest bit. And to one side for some reason. That's my bad marking out probably. But oh, the bottom of the switch fits flush against here which is what I was after. Give me the most possible room at the top for where the bottom of the display is going to go. And the other problem I will have is the atomizer connector which has to come through here and push the code. 
and I'm going to deal with that in the next video, actually. So, in between filming, the postman's been and delivered this nice little presentation box, which holds the new DNA. Isn't that pretty? And isn't it incredibly small? <laughs> so what will happen is I'm going to have to cut a hole in the side for this to fit through. And this is going to sit somewhere about there. Pretty much flush with the case, like so. And the anamizer connection is going to come through here. And so, pop that away again. So, what I'm going to need to do is make this a bit shorter because, as present, this will stick out too far and get in the way. So what I intend to do is cut away some of this collar which isn't really needed as I'm not putting it into a tube at all which is how it was originally designed to go. It only needs to go for the thickness of this. So I'll sit flush on there. So this bit is a blister requirements because it won't make it any more stable leaving it on because it won't be attached to anything anyway. So, get out my little vise. We've all got to have our little vises now and again. And I should hold it in there. Just quickly push out there. Send a pin and it's grommet. We don't want them in the way. And now I just need to take with the Dremel and cut through this. Basically, that nice and flush. Don't need that anymore. And that will sit nicely inside here and won't get in the way. Well, there you look. But we shall see when we get to work on it. <laughs> I'm off to play now. No, it's been a very good putty day today, or uh, or glue day, um, because it just didn't set. So what I'm going to have to do is do it the hard way. F effectively, I've mixed up my um, my it'd be like putty epoxy. Um, now, for your attic connection, what I tend to do is is get a bead, make it into a little sausage, pop that in, and I just lay over the top of the uh, attic connector. Now, holding that in place, what I tend to do is sort of feed that down and around. And you can see this. 
with a screwdriver to start with. So I'm going all the way down, all the way around, down in there. This is when I'll add, if you like, a second sausage over the top. And this one I'll try and get pushed down and actually go under the connector. I don't know if you can see that, but I'll work that down, round, and then work it back under the actual connector. Now, the one thing that, that I tend to do when I'm working with a tin, uh, in terms of if you ever needed to repair the attic connection on this, I always try to leave um, the end exposed. And there's a very good reason for that. You can you know, reset, you resolder the centre pin through relatively easily. Um, however, getting a, a neg contact on there can sometimes be an absolute pain in the bum. And then I just literally push that in place under the attic connection, like so. So we've got our end free there. And the beauty of this stuff, that will hold that attic connection there as it stands at the moment, but we can mess around with it while that sets. It doesn't take very long at all and just hold it in position. Uh, what I will be doing to finish this off is just mix up a bit more of this epoxy and I'm just going to get some under this board um, to stop it potentially rocking. But we do have there a, like a completed, um, that was a VV gripper, um, now in a tin. Nice and simple. Back to me in the studio where I'm probably getting really jealous about Mark's um, mod he's making this week. I'll talk to you later. Cheers now. Bye-bye. And nothing could be further from the truth. I'm not jealous at all, Mark. You get. Um, but yes, loving, loving the... Uh, can't wait to see the, um, the DNA mod come together. Um, with all that said, if there are any of you guys out there um, who have got any little sort of uh, hints, tips, videos that you want to put together um, to get played out on uh, Tin Your Tip, please feel free to, to drop me a line. I'm always looking for you know, new ideas, um, new mods, anything like that. If you've got a little tip, be it soldering, be it anything else, stick it down on a video, get it to us. We will try and use it in one of the shows. Um, remember, next week, as I said, we will be uh, doing, um, if you like, a bit of, bit of talk, a bit of chat. I'll try and get Mark in the uh, in the telly um, somewhere up there, and uh, and we'll get him on Skype, and we will try and field as many of your questions as we can. Um, I will be doing that in between um, Mark's bit where he's doing something with some dodgy board. Um, he'll be finishing that next week, apparently. Um, I hope he chokes on it. No, I, I, it, it will be nice. <laughs> no, no jealousy at all here. Um, with all that said, it is time to call proceedings to an end tonight. We will see you back here next week. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, I'm rapidly looking for the tolls. Good night, guys. Once again, thanks for tuning in. Tip with Gary Dibley.